Hello, my name is Alex Smetcher. I'm the Associate Director of Development of the Public Knowledge Project. We are best known for developing open journal systems, which is free software to publish an academic journal. It does everything from the submission process for authors through peer review, copy editing, proofreading, into finally disseminating the published output. That includes things like DOIs, Google Scholar, OEIPMH, and ORCID. ORCID is the subject of this demonstration. OGS is actively used to publish more than 10,000 journals worldwide in a variety of disciplines and languages. There's examples on the PGP website. That's just browsing them to get a look, get a look in more detail. For example, this is a national portal of Finnish journals. I don't speak Finnish, so I can't say that much about it, but this is a look at a single journal. Here's an issue, article information, and the article itself which in this case is a PDF file. I'm going to demonstrate three different kinds of interaction with ORCID. The first is the registration. This is the page you'd use to create a new user account in OJS. You'll see at the top here is the ORCID logo that allows you to create or connect your ORCID ID. This brings up an ORCID authorization page. which allows OGS and ORCID to communicate. Here, ORCID is telling OGS that the entered ORCID is valid and has been checked by the user. This results in pre-filling the registration form. You see that my first name, last name, affiliation, country, etc. have been pre-filled. Now I'll finish entering the form to create my OGS account. I've now registered as an author within the system and I can create a new submission. I'll choose a section, agree to the various terms of the journal, and move on to the second step. Here I can upload the submission file. Typically this will be a single document, like a Word document, but if there's many different files, they can all be entered. Things like data sets, appendices, uh, high-resolution images for medical journals, that sort of thing. Move on to step three, which is where the metadata gets entered. Title, abstract, my own account has been added here as a contributor. The authorization I did with ORCID previously when I registered, now carries through to my author record. So now this author record is known to be the ORCID I, I used in the uh, authentication form, and that's stored within OJS. You have the full metadata set, Dublin Core metadata. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to go back to the form here and add a second contributor. including the email address. Now I'm doing this on behalf of the second author, so it wouldn't make sense to follow the same process we already did to enter their ORCID and password. This user won't have that. What I can do though, is click this checkbox here that says send email to request ORCID authorization from author. What OGS now does is emails the author with a special link they can use to confirm their ORCID. Here's that email. It lists the, the title of the article and allows them to confirm whether they are active in that publication or not. I'll follow the link now. And it confirms that they're verified and associated with the submission. Back to the main author. We'll now finish the submission process. Oh, by the way, if I now go into the second author record, I should see that their ORCID has been entered here automatically. This is what was filled in by that authorization process. Now we confirm the submission. And we're done. So now I'll change my hat from the author's hat to the editor's hat. The editor will receive notification that a new submission has come in. 
There it is. And now we look at the OGS workflow process. If you're not familiar with the workflow that OGS supports, essentially it's a number of different stages at the top here. First submission, then peer review, then copy editing, and then production. And I'm going to skip over these steps here. Normally there would be a lot more involved in this, the peer review process, all that sort of thing, but this is just demonstrating a publication step. So we'll accept and skip peer review. That'll move us into the copy editing process. I'm going to send the submission directly to publication, sorry, to production. And here we are in production. What I can do here is schedule for publication. I'll choose a back issue and press the save button. So now the new submission has been raced through the workflow and published in an existing back issue. What this does as well is this has a conduit to ORCID, um, if you do support the member API in this case, um, that allows for the submissions to be sent directly to ORCID and entered into the author's accounts for those authors that have ORCID um, uh, IDs registered with their accounts. So if I look into my email inbox as the author, as any one of the authors, I should see a notification that would like to deposit this submission in my ORCID record. And there's the link. I'll enter my account. And that confirms that the ORCID ID has been verified and the submission has been added to my ORCID record. So let's go to my ORCID record now and take a look. By the way, we're using the Sandbox uh, ORCID site. This is just a test account so that we're not actually creating publications here. Go to my ORCID record. This is a bit slow for no particular reason. I'm going to try this in a different browser. Oh, no, there we go. And what this should tell me is I now have my ORCID demo as a submission. This was sent directly from OJS to ORCID. So to review the three interactions, we saw a registration form where the user could create a user account uh, by filling in the ORCID authorization. That allowed the OGS registration to take details from the ORCID, ORCID account, things such as first name, last name, email, um, affiliation, but most importantly, the ORCID itself. The second demonstration was to add a second author and allow them to be invited to confirm their ORCID. And the third was this deposit process where the publication of a submission resulted in this article being uh, added to my list of works within ORCID. Um, this work is, uh, OpenJS is open source software, and so we often work with contributors. The work that I demonstrated here was completed with Nils and Dulip at the University of Heidelberg. And previously, uh, ORCID support was added by Clinton and crew at the University of Pittsburgh and other participants in our sprint working groups, which often tackle small subjects in uh, two or three day events. Uh, we hope to refine this uh, ORCID integration, uh, for example, in future sprint events by adding things like support for reviewer credit. Just to mention our community again, um, we are an open source group and our community is very active online. This is our support forum, forum.pkp.sfu.ca. And this is where you'll see lots of conversation about the technical aspects of running the journal, but also things like feature requests. If you have a journal you want to uh, demonstrate, you can add it to our community showcase. And also discuss the editorial decisions that are made in the way that OGS works. There's frequently asked questions if you run into, into problems, that sort of thing. The work I've demonstrated now has not yet been released, but uh, as of November 1st, which is when I'm making this video, it's very close. So I expect you'll be able to see it on the PKP blog pkp.sfu.ca slash blog, along with another, another number of other event announcements and uh, uh, feature descriptions and so on. So watch this area for an announcement of the release of the updated ORCID profile plugin. Thanks very much for watching.